Welcome everyone to our Tuesday night mental wellness. I am the host this evening. I'm Sarah Hine. I'm from Wisconsin and really excited to see all of you and have you a part of this amazing evening because tonight we are focusing on children. That is our topic. Uh, it's back to school season and I couldn't have thought of a better person to really give us some, uh, some light on what's happening in today's world, some hope, a whole lot of hope. Tonight is about hope. It's not about the darkness. It is about hope um, for children, for families, uh, for, for parents, for parents, than the one and only pediatrician, Dr. Kevin Rouse. And Dr. Kevin, first of all, I want to just thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know you're coming to us. I would call it hot off the press from your office. His office is in the, in the background, guys. Uh, he, he squeezed us in because he just loves helping children so much. That's who he is. I had the privilege of getting to know Dr. Kevin a couple of years ago. I uh, met him through a great mutual friend of ours. And Dr. Kevin, what impressed me the most about Dr. Kevin um, was I've been around the block when it comes to doctors. My husband's suffered from a rare disease. He's been sick for the last decade of his life. And I have been literally around the country dealing with very high-end specialists. And I'll be honest, I, I was feeling pretty, um, mm, not liking doctors so much because a lot of them had no bedside manner. They were not open-minded. Um, they were just quick to push the pill, meant multiple pills. And when I met Dr. Kevin, I had some faith and hope renewed. And then the more I got to know the guy, and then I met his wonderful wife, Dana, and found out he's got two amazing children and that his family is his why in life and that he's had his practice for over 20 years. And his passion is about always looking outside the box and looking for alternatives in any way, shape, or form, which means that he has to really go outside the box because medical school didn't teach him those things. Um, and he's shaking his head. I had renewed faith that there are really good doctors out there. And I'm very picky who I interview. And so the fact that he's on this shows how much faith I have in this incredible man. So Dr. Kevin, thank you for joining us. We love you and thank you for renewing faith in me personally that there are some really amazing doctors out there. Wow, what an, what an introduction. Thanks, Sarah. I'm, I'm humbled and honored to be here. It's always fun talking with you about things. And so, yeah, this it's my pleasure. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, and, and one of the, I think <laughs> my most favorite thing I love about you, Dr. Kevin, is that you love to um, dress up as Santa Claus at Christmas time for your kiddos. <laughs> And I, when I heard that, I just have to throw that out there. That was like my favorite part of you. I'm like, where were you as a pediatrician uh, when my kids were little? So <laughs> just had to say that. Just I actually had, had a kiddo yesterday said, uh, you look like Santa Claus. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't think the two of us have ever been seen together in the same place at the same time. So just like. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, listen, we live in a, a changing world and I'm a mom of three and a grandmother now of two, two beautiful little granddaughters. And I look at what these young families, Dr. Kevin, are going through and it's, it's, it's some scary stuff. And so tonight's goal is to really shed, first of all, some educational light on what is happening, the changes that are happening, just so that we're aware. And the difference between conventional therapy is and more of a holistic approach and what that, you know, what that looks like. So, you know, you've had your practice, is it over 25 years? Am I saying that correctly? Uh, I've been in practice here for just over 21 years. 21 years. Yes. 21 years. What are you seeing in the last couple of years? Are you seeing a change in what children's needs are? Are you not seeing a change? Tell us, talk to us. Absolutely. Well, you know, I've been here in the same practice for 21 years, and uh, no one told me in medical school and residency that there would be so much mental health involved in primary care pediatrics. And I will tell you, it's not just been the last two or three years. It's pretty much been since I <laughs> walked out of Arkansas Children's Hospital into private practice. I will tell you that over the last couple of years, it has escalated dramatically. 
and uh, in, in a way that's a lot due to more awareness of mental mental health and mental wellness, which is a great thing. But then also it's related to lots of stress being put on our kids from all kinds of sources. But yeah, I've seen my practice shift a lot in the last couple of years for sure. You know, I, I actually Googled some statistics. And one of the things that was shocking to me, absolutely shocking, is the statistic that, I'm going to read it off, that 49.5% um, of adolescents, so children, will have a mental health problem or disorder. 49.5. And as we're approaching this new school year, uh, and I want to make this very clear, it's not just the beginning of the school year. Some parents will be listening to this, Dr. Kevin, three months from now. And their kids started school fine, but three months in, the stresses have caught up. Uh, you know, some are anxious now, you know, starting. So this is really, honestly, a, a recording that I think will be listened to over and over and over again, no matter what season we're in, no matter what time we're in. And that is my hope that whoever listens to this is blessed by this information. Um, it, it affects every family. And, and stress, the old saying is stress for an adult or a child um, you know, eight to nine out of 10 doctor visits, uh, stress has in, induced those symptoms. Would you find that that's pretty darn accurate? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're all stressed. Everybody's stressed from kids to adults. And um, I will tell you that a, a, a large portion of what I see uh, symptom wise in kids can be boiled down to stress in a, in a large, large majority. Let's talk about that. What, tell us what are the symptoms? Because I think for all the parents and grandparents and neighbors and aunts and uncles that are listening tonight, educate us what to watch for and what to be aware and look for in our children. Well, you, you also have to think about age groups, you know, right. our, our elementary age kids uh, and um you know, I see lots of complaints of symptoms such as recurrent headaches, tummy aches, digestive problems, sleeping problems, behavior changes, uh, moodiness. But I'd say the two biggest physical complaints I see among kids, uh, and actually this goes into adolescence too, would be would be stomach aches and headaches. Mm. And, you know, we we will do all kinds of, you know, tests and look for causes and try medications and stuff. And it, it, it gets a bit frustrating and you just kind of throw up your hands and say, well, I don't know what's causing all this. And I will say that just in the last two or three years, it's been, it's been a lot easier to have the conversation with families saying, you know what, we've looked for a lot of medical reasons and, and we just can't find anything, which is a good thing. So I think we need to think that this might be something else, such as something involving our mental wellness uh, impacting our physical symptoms. So it's been really nice that people are much more aware and open to having those discussions now. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. And mental wellness is for all of us, right? I mean, it's not just the person struggling, we all have physical health, we all have mental health, and we want to get our mental health to be mentally well. And that is for every adult, that is for every child. And, and really, that's, that's why you fell in love with, you know, solutions to help your patients. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, I was looking, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying, I, I was, you know, looking for something for myself about two and a half years ago was kind of in just the worst shape of my life physically mentally and financially honestly but physically and mentally and I was just looking for something and through a mutual friend of ours I was introduced to these holistic options and I'd never really thought about that before and didn't get trained in it. I've had families ask me over the years, are there any natural solutions, holistic options? And I would be like, well, you know, probably show me what you got and we'll look at it. But now it was so cool to have something to kind of hang my hat on and, and something that I've actually used, my, used myself and was seeing great results. And then to start being able to recommend that with families, it was just so exciting. And it made, it made visits less daunting for me. I mean, honestly, I used to look at a chart before I went in the room to see why a child was there and it might be 
stomach ache. Oh, you know, stomach ache since they were born, like, you know, and they're 10 years old. <laughs> and I used to dread going in those rooms. I really did. Wow. And, or even if it was just flat out ADHD, not controlled with their meds. Oh, here we go. I got to go. This is going to take forever. And I would just get stressed out about that. And it was just really, I, I found myself being excited to go in that room because I think I have something that would help these folks because it's helped me for one thing. And so uh, it was just a whole different perspective for me. Absolutely. I, I love that. Let, let's talk a little bit about the difference between conventional and holistic, because we want to encourage every parent listening to this, that it's important for you to consult with your physician. Obviously, um, Dr. Rouse is not trying to, uh, you know, diagnose your child over this, whether you're listening to the podcast or listening to the recording or you're on the live. Um, it is really about consulting with your physician, but to take note, to take literally some notes as to what we're going to cover tonight, you know, to look at conventional versus more of a holistic approach. You know, conventional is a lot of, you know, different medications that you can take. And I looked up the average, just for an example, ADD, ADHD um, side effects that the common side effects to those meds. And, and this is what I found. And tell me if I'm inaccurate in saying this, Dr. Kevin, um, sleep problems, decreased appetite, weight loss, increased blood pressure, dizziness, headaches, stomach aches, moodiness, nervousness, and in some uh, patients, uh, a tick tick disorders, and even personality changes. Um, is that pretty accurate for side effects to a lot of meds? Um, you get the clapper on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, I just saw that on my desk. How funny. I don't want oh. the clapper on that. That's awful. Oh, well, honestly, it's not a good thing, but you, you, hit the nail, you hit the nail on the head. You scored, you scored an A plus on that. Oh, I, and it, that's sad. And I want to give parents hope tonight because it takes a village to raise a child. You know, the old saying, it's true. It does. And when parents are exhausted and they're tired and, you know, there, there's a time and a place for medications. This is not putting all medications down. Um, we want to make that very clear, but, but what if we started to flip the switch in America where instead of we just put children on medications first, what if we looked at more of a holistic approach first and save the medications for last? Do you think from your professional opinion, that would be a wise decision for parents? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for, for, for all of my professional life career, you know, I was taught that, and, and once again, I am not uh, abandoning traditional medicine. I still prescribe medications uh, for ADHD. I, I use products in conjunction with those. Some, you know, so, and I always recommend you you talk with your physician and, and you know personalize your treatment and be comfortable with the physician you're using. But you know, I was taught that the gold standard, and in medical terms, gold standard means that's what you do. That's the be all end all treatment for something. The gold standard for, for ADHD was, was stimulant therapy with methylphenidate. That's what I was taught. Mm -hmm. And so I went into my practice with that a mindset. And I won't say that I wasn't open to other things, but I didn't know about other things. And so that's just the pattern I fell into for the last, you know, 18, 19 years of my practice is you see a child with certain issues, you send them for testing, which is appropriate. You get a diagnosis and boom, you write your prescription. And, and that works for some kids. But mm -hmm. just like you mentioned, everything you listed, I've seen every one of those things you listed. I've seen some of those today. So wow. uh, it's, it's so true. And to have something else and to realize that there's, there's science. And for me, what's cool is that this is not something I have just decided, oh, I think I'll try this. You know, it sounds really neat. I actually got to study the science behind it and talk to the scientists behind it. Uh, I've never spoken to whoever, well, obviously they're probably no longer with us, but whoever developed our stimulant meds, you know, I, I don't get to, I mean, obviously I do get to visit with pharmaceutical reps, but as far as talking to someone who has actually done the science and the studies behind these products, personally, uh, that speaks volumes that I'm comfortable with what I'm using. Yeah, 
I, I love that you just said that. Let's talk a little bit about this gut brain connection and how food is your mood. And um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have this conversation between Dr. Kevin where I'm gonna like be the layman person and be the advocate for all of you who are not sciencey, and then he can help fill in the gaps. But parents, have you ever noticed at Halloween time, the following Monday after Halloween weekend, he's already laughing. He knows where I'm going with this. Our teacher's saying, oh, my classroom is calm as can be. No, kids are freaking <laughs> wired because they ate sugar. Food is your mood. And they didn't just eat sugar. They ate all sorts of colors and dyes, things that are not even allowed in other countries. Just saying. So listen, we have got to start to become educated on this and realize that our food is our mood. And science used to tell us, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know, that everything we thought, all of our feel-good neurotransmitters were in our brain, but now science has revealed to us that's not necessarily true. Is that Dr. Kevin? That neurotransmitters are made also your serotonin and your dopamine are produced in your gut. Can you tell us a little bit about this gut brain connection story that that really has shifted how we treat children and adults? Yeah, correct. So, so first of all, I am not Dr. Talbot. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you know, I tend to be kind of a straight talking plain guy. So I'm I'm not gonna just bore you with science for one reason. I, I'm I'm not sure I can talk as intelligent. I know I can't talk as intelligently, but I do know through through my training that the gut is more than just a digestive organ. Okay. And the gut's composed of several organs, but the, that that system is not just for digestion. Obviously that's one of its primary functions, but our immune system is centered in our gut. I knew that. Um, our neurotransmitters are produced in our gut. And I knew that, <clears throat> but I never really thought about that much before. I didn't think that, you know, and I, I knew, I know that I knew that kids who were eating a lot of processed foods or a lot of sugar or, you know, not eating healthy, uh, those kids tend to have a little more issues, you know, our, our ADHD kids that were, you know, those were, we would kind of target, you know, say you need to eat right, but <clears throat> that's about all we would say. But when you have your neurotransmitters being produced in your gut that communicate with the brain, the things such as norepinephrine, epinephrine, serotonin, dopamine, GABA, all of those neurotransmitters that have specific roles to affect our mood, our focus, our, our uh, stress response, our resilience, our uh, relaxation, all of those things, when that's all out of whack, then things aren't good. And you right. throw a medication at that, and most of the time, the medication only addresses one of those neurotransmitters, and all the other ones are still out there going crazy. Um, so you got to get a healthy gut. And our society, as of nature, does not have a healthy gut uh, for lots of reasons. Uh, the diet we eat is, is, is very important. You know, we have a diet full of processed foods, dyes. Um, the sources of our food, you know, some of the things we're not sure where, where it's obtained from, um, the uh, sugar process, you know, all of that stuff, just diet, yuck. Uh, other things our gut is exposed to is antibiotics, which mess up the whole microbiome, the, the, the organism inside our gut that helps produce all of those neurotransmitters. So our antibiotics, stress that we face affects our gut, uh, just so many things. So, um, I'm starting to ramble about that, but I don't know if that's answering your question. Oh my goodness. It's so good. I'm <laughs> okay. actually glad that you brought up antibiotics because I think a lot of children that are struggling have been on a previous antibiotic and it has disrupted their gut bacteria so much that now they're having all of these other symptoms that they never maybe had before. And it could even be later on, couldn't it? A couple of months, even a year later, um, just being on one antibiotic, uh, you know, for a short period of time can really disrupt that gut bacteria. And if it's not replaced for the rest of their life, if it's not replaced correctly. Sure. Right. Yeah. And so that the antibiotics and, and you all know, I mean, obviously I'm a pediatrician. So this is a big part of my practice. You know, I see sick kids and, you know, that first two or three years of life, it feels like you're in the doctor's office all the time, ear infection, sinus infection, strep throat, whatever. And you're getting your antibiotics, which are necessary, but totally jacks up your microbiome. And then the the diet that we have, the environment we have doesn't ever fix it back. 
And of course, in the last few years, everybody's talked about doing probiotics and prebiotics. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. Let's put your kid on probiotic because we're putting them on antibiotics. Well, what I've learned in the last couple of years, the importance of strain specific probiotics that have a specific function for the microbiome to, re microbiome to restore those gut that gut organism to do what it's supposed to do. So when you just throw, say, oh, I'm going to get a probiotic, well, you got to look and see exactly which one you're on. And that's the cool thing about the science behind our products is that they have studied which specific probiotic does what for the gut brain axis. I love that you just said that. Here's what I heard, Kevin, and, it, it, I, and I hope this helps somebody who's not scientific. <laughs> Um, because you and I are like the blind leading the blind with the science of probiotics, but we're going to get through this. So here's my analogy is um, that Dr. Sean had explained one time is the word probiotic is like the word dog. And if you have a pit bull and a mini toy doodle, golden doodle, they're two very different dogs. They're different species. Well, that's the same as your gut bacteria. So if you think you're on a probiotic, you're treating it. That's like treating the dog, but, but a pit bull to a, a mini toy golden doodle, they're very different. And that's what Kevin's saying about these strain specific uh, pro and prebiotics. It's, it is, it is complicated. And what I love about the brand that you represent, Dr. Kevin Amari global, which is the first ever mental wellness company. It's actually trademarked that, um, is that we've simplified that for the average family. Because you don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to be a kombucha brewmaster and spend most of your life and days in the kitchen making kombuchas. Um, we've, we've created a wonderful kids pack that's simple. Um, it, it's like the new version of, I, I wouldn't say it's like a meal replacement, but like, like, like nutritional fast food that you can just order. It just shows up and it's there. And, and Dr. Kevin, what I wanted to share with parents tonight is a couple of the ingredients that are in a couple of our products that I think are really cool. Um, there's a product for kids mood um, that has Afron in it, which is a patented clinically studied premium saffron um, extract that helps normalize your feel-good neurotransmitters. It reduces oxidative stress, your stress hormones, and provides um, neuroproductive benefits. We also have something called holy basil, or holly, I'm sorry, holy basil, which these are ingredients that you don't see or, or, or have on your dinner table every day. Let's be real people, okay? Um, they're just not. And so holy basil provides a calm, um, a calm to your body and mind. It supports resilience um, to anxious feelings. Rosemary supports mental focus, supports immune system. So they've really done a nice blend of different ingredients that have been used worldwide, um, often as a first choice of defense for ADD, ADHD, autism, um, pandas, POCS. I mean, all sorts of things that in, instead of in the, in the U.S., we tend to look at it as a last you know, a, a last case. Um, so these are some of the nutrients that are in some of the products that you are using with your patients. Um, and can you tell us what are you noticing in the last couple of years by, you know, implementing this into some of your patients? Tell us, what are you seeing? Yeah. And I'm actually, you know, I'm not ashamed to have notes. I think that's pretty, you know, me too, buddy. I want, me too. <laughs> I mean, I want you to know what I, I actually have lots of patients using products, but I've done a few little testimonies. And uh, I, I mean, if you want me to just tell you about some of these. Please. Things? All right. So let me tell you about my very first patient I shared products with. Okay. His name's Slayton. Mom's giving me permission to say his first name. Uh, he's seven years old now. He's a twin. They were former premature, premature twins. And Slayton has been the Energizer Bunny since the day he came out. I mean, he is just Mr. Hyperactive. And, mm. uh, you know, he was very hyperactive in preschool, just very difficult to kind of control. But uh, so mom had him had some testing done at psychology and he, fed, he met the criteria for probable ADHD, but he was really young. I mean, he was not quite, he's not ready for not, not in kindergarten yet. So they came to see me um, and mom, mom is in education herself and she knew that kindergarten was just not gonna go well. He was just, he's gonna have to have something. Well, this is before I was familiar with the products. So the something is you've had your testing, you have your diagnosis, let's do a trial of a stimulant med. 
He's a little younger side. I was a little hesitant to do it, but hey, what else am I going to do? So I started him on some med and he, he had some decent results. It helped a little bit, but mom was just stressed out about because he was so emotional and he wouldn't eat and he was already a little thing to begin with. So this was uh, one month and then they came back to see me for follow-up. In the meantime, I had been introduced to these products and used them myself and mom was frustrated. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm learning about something new and I've looked into it and would you like to give this a try? And she said, absolutely, let's do it. <laughs> so we started him on the kids pack and the kids mood and the fundamentals and all that jazz. And he just started doing wonderfully. We were able to reduce his medication. We stopped meds and we did the products, which helped. When school got started, he was still very, very hyper. So we did have to put him back on a smaller dose of stimulant and he has done great. Uh, since then, he's going into second grade now and uh, takes a very small dose of stimulant and continues to use our kids' products. Uh, wow. Sophie, Sophie's five years old now, but she has a seizure disorder that's controlled with seizure meds, but she's always just been a horrible eater, a picky eater, uh, wouldn't gain weight. Mom started her on the kids' pack, and uh, I actually wrote down the text she sent me. Uh, within a few weeks, I get this. She eats Dr. Rouse. She actually eats and gets hungry. It's amazing. Pretty cool, huh? Wow. Uh, Tyler. Okay, Tyler is a cool dude. He's 13 and he is he has autism. I've seen Tyler since he was born. Tyler uh, was very hyperactive. And so when he was in elementary school, he was on a stimulant for ADHD. And um, it helped, but he dealt with not eating and, you know, not gaining weight well, emotional side effects. And mom had just kind of had enough. And so she stopped meds and he just kind of cruised through elementary school and just kind of survived basically. But then along comes junior high and things are, you know, a lot more demanding and his grades started suffering. His teacher started saying he's not able to stay focused and uh, he's just disorganized and so mom had had been seeing and watching what i'd been doing and came and asked me some questions and we she said i don't want to put him back on meds i'm not going to go through that again and so i said well let's give it a try he is over 100 pounds so we decided to go ahead and he doesn't like to to drink things he has texture issues with his autism and so he's over 100 pounds so we opt to use our adult products our fundamentals pack and that guy has done amazing. Uh, the teacher within a few weeks was telling mom he is reading to us chapters at a time instead of struggling to get a whole get a page done. He's just doing very well. Now, in fact, I just saw him a week a couple of weeks ago for checkup, and he's he's doing great. Um, that's Tyler. Uh, Ella and Axel are brother and sisters. Ella is six. Ella is I'm sorry. Ella's eight. Axel six. These kids have anxiety through the roof. And I used to see them all the time for just abdominal pain, constipation, just, you know, one of those visits where and mom would know that I would just get frustrated and say, I don't know what else to do. They're, they're, they're healthy kids. I don't know why their stomach hurts all the time. Enter the kids pack. No more constipation. No more tummy aches. Uh, doing great. The Wesley girls. Okay. This is a family of three daughters. The most, uh, complicated one of her of them is Olivia. Olivia is 10. Olivia also has seizure disorder and it's not just a typical seizure disorder where you take a medicine to control your seizures. She has very severe frequent daily multiple times a day seizures. Mm -hmm. It's been almost devastating to her development along the way. She's had to have a vagus nerve stimulator, been on multiple meds. She's had a partial lobectomy surgery on her brain. Um, and so she uh, also struggles with focus, uh, not doing well in school, they try to stimulate on her and she wouldn't eat. I mean, she was losing weight and she didn't have a lot to lose to begin with. So mom came to me and said, I can't do this medicine anymore. We put her on the kids pack, stopped her med. She's doing wonderfully. They homeschool. She's progressing well. She's eating, she's gaining weight. Mom also started her two younger uh, daughters on them, six-year-old and a four-year-old that have anxiety and chronic abdominal pain, constipation, things like that, working wonders for them as well. So those are just a handful. Wow. 
of testimonies I jotted down for you guys. Wow, Kevin, I can see why your job is so fulfilling and also very stressful. You're working with children. And um, I, it's God bless you for what you do. Seriously. Um, yeah. There's two things I wanted to point out is that this gut brain connection really affects everyone. You know, we're going to specifically talk about children all differently. Uh, it just depends on where their weaknesses are in their bodies. So would you say it's accurate that, you know, when you address the gut brain connection and restore these strain specific pre and probiotics and these neurotransmitters that for a child who is autistic or has pandas or has POCS or a child, you know, with seizure disorders or ADD or ADHD, it, it, it affects them all differently, but it helps those weakness, those weak areas in their bodies. Would you say that that's what you're seeing in your practice? Because you gave a lot of different examples. Oh, absolutely. It's like so many different things, mm -hmm. but a common solution to help all those problems. That's what's pretty cool. Wow. I just got goosebumps. <laughs> like I seriously just got goosebumps because that is powerful. And, and here's why Dr. Kevin, five years ago, I uh, helped pioneer this company. And I remember Dr. Sean Talbot saying that this is going to be a multifactorial approach to a massive missing link. And one day, ah, makes me emotional saying this, one day we're gonna hear lots of different stories. And we won't, you know, it's because of all these different strains and it's so expensive to purchase just one strain and Amari Global made this affordable for families. And that to me is such a gift um, because it's, it's not covered through insurances right now. It's just not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I think it's amazing. The second thing I want to point out um, is, you know, a lot of kiddos have sleep issues. I hear all the time that parents are putting their children on melatonin. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I, I mean, I myself have have, uh, have recommended melatonin for families because what else are we going to do? <laughs> it's, right. just, it's what we do. And I myself have prescribed meds for kids for sleep against the my gut telling me, what am I doing? So uh, what I'm seeing with kids, and I didn't really put that in those testimonies, a lot of these families their kids are struggling to sleep and that's a byproduct of all the other issues going on. And we are seeing that this is Im improving their sleep. So I hear that testimony regularly. It's like, you know what? They're sleeping better too. Um, and another cool thing we have about our company is we actually do have a sleep product. Um, it's not a kid's sleep product per se, but it is okay to use in kids. Uh, it is not melatonin. It helps your body produce its own melatonin. And kids can take that. They can take a, a lower dose of that. And it's a capsule, so they can open the capsule if they can't swallow it and put the contents in something. But as far as taking all this melatonin, you know, the more you take of melatonin, the more you're telling your body it doesn't need to make its own. And using artificial, uh, an artificial substance that your body can already make on its own, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and, you know, I do see adverse effects of melatonin, uh, mostly in kids. I'll see that they will, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes have nightmares, significant nightmares. You know, it's disrupting sleep for the whole family. Uh, and then just being really tired, groggy the next day. It can help them fall asleep, but they don't tend to stay asleep. So sleep initiation, it can help with that. But then if they're going to sleep, but then within a couple hours, they're up roaming, coming to mom and dad's room. That's not helpful. <laughs> so, uh yeah a hundred percent would you say for parents getting ready with their kids now to this new school year um there's like you said earlier there's a lot of stress in the world there's a lot of pressure depending on what age group they're in um just from peer pressure to school you know test a lot of kids have a hard time taking tests that was one of my children mm -hmm. um to you know the 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 sports world has become everything has become so intense to just our world has become intense to the isolation that most kids went through let's face it for the last couple of years it is a a fear-based world out there that our children now are going off into school and um and there's it's just a lot Lot of things going on and so as parents are you know looking at how can I equip my child going into this school year to have help them focus better help them sleep better help them become more stress resilient 
Um, what would be a simple solution that you'd recommend if you could recommend a preventative thing for every parent? What would you recommend? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's a big tough, question. That's a tough one. You're putting a lot of pressure on me. Here. I know. I know. <laughs> you know, Sarah, I'm a firm believer in the importance of family mm. and whatever that looks like for your household. But I think, um, you know, we've, as a society, we've become so immersed with, and I'm guilty of this too, when you're with your family, you're not really with your family. <laughs> you're on your phone, you're checking your social media, you're watching YouTube videos, you're looking at TikToks, whatever it is. So I've, I'm a firm believer in families getting back to each other and being aware of each other and spending time with each other and watching for signs that something may not be right with one of your family members. And obviously we're talking about kids. So parents watching your kids, you know, if your kid's behavior starts seeming different than normal for them, or if they, you know, especially adolescents, if they're withdrawn, I mean, adolescents withdraw, we know that they go to the room and want to stay there. But if, if they seem to be doing that more than what you would typically expect, uh, if they seem to be losing interest in things that they normally have been interested in, just watch for signs like that, you know, by being in this in this profession for 20 years with kids, I have had, I started this practice where there was no such thing as cell, cell phones, or there were very few. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there were not smartphones. <laughs> there was not social media. But I've watched all that develop just in the last few years. And that's coincided, you know, I mean, forget pandemic. Without pandemic, I, I think we would probably still be dealing with as much mental health mental health issues with especially with adolescents and social media and I, I most social media is a good thing it's one of those neutral things it can be good it can be bad you know so, right. so I'm not right. trashing that but I have seen I will tell you that when I see adolescents and adolescents they will open up to you if you really start listening and uh you know I'll talk to them sometimes about the parents in the room and I'll hear things like when I'm asking what what's what's bothering you well you know I just don't fit in or uh, I haven't found my place or I'm not included in things. And this friend group is posting, they're doing this or that. And I wasn't there. And so it's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, and once again, I'm starting to ramble, but <laughs> you know, I just, just be aware, be present with your kids and, and, and just watch for signs and clues of, of stress in their lives. I, I love that. I actually love that you gave some real life examples because that peer pressure of I'm not there on social media, drop a, a one in the chat for those of you that are on the slide. Um, any of your kids ever go through that? Because I hear that all the time. And from little ages now where they're seeing on Snapchat, they're seeing on social media, they're seeing different platforms of something that they may not be on. And it's all, you know, peer pressure can even turn into bullying. I mean, it's there. It, it's there. So to be preventative, be present, be balanced. And would you say to give your kids a really strong, like fighting chance into this next school year or anytime during the school year and just life in general, um, do you feel like the more that you keep your gut and brain health in check, it's going to keep a resiliency so that when stressors come at them, they're equipped to stay more calm, to not feel anxious, to be able to, um, deal with it better? Would you say that that would be something you'd recommend to pay parents as a proactive measure? Oh, yes. And I will say resilience is, is key. And that's one thing I've found for myself. Uh, I mean, junk's going to happen, you know? Right. It's how we respond to it can determine the state of our mental health. And so what I have found personally with supplements that I use and getting my gut brain access in check, that I'm much more resilient. I mean, some days more than others, obviously, but I'm much more resilient to stressors that come my way. And if we can teach our kids at an early age to do that, it'll save them a world of hurt for making potential poor decisions along the way to cope with the stress that comes to them. I can't agree more. If you, if you could, would you love to see every child that comes into your office on, on the kids pack to help them build that resiliency? I mean, in all honesty. I, I, I would, because, I mean, you know, we focus on ADHD, we focus on anxiety, we focus on 
chronic stomach aches, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, like I said, as a, as a society, I think we have dysfunctional guts and dysfunctional microbiomes. And uh, I think getting those, those in check would help us all and our kids included. I just had this thought. I have to say it. it must be a Holy Spirit moment. Um, you know, the old saying is that you finally can take care of yourself or eat right when you're pregnant, or I better watch what I eat now because I just had a heart attack. Parents, stop doing that with your kids. Stop waiting for like, and I'm guilty of this too. We're all guilty of it. So I'm not like putting anyone down, but don't wait for your child to have an autistic or pandas or ADD, ADHD, like a label, like let's just all be proactive because they're all going to be under stress and the healthier the gut brain connection, Kevin, is it true? that that builds immune support, which means would help them during the cold and flu season. Am I accurate in that? Oh yes, most definitely, yeah. So a huge preventative is to be present to the school year, to be present, turn off the phone, set the example, to be balanced, um, to make sure that we are eating as, you know, as healthy as we can, having those cheat moments, but making sure that you're filling in the missing gaps. And for all of you listening out there, if you're like, I wonder if this could help my child, I would encourage you to reach out to the person that that um, sent you this recording, or if you're alive, reach out to the person that brought you here and look, take a look at the brand Amari Global. Take a look at the kids pack, what Dr. Kevin is recommending to his patients and what he takes himself. I love Dr. Kevin that you, that you also knew that you needed self-care. And that's a reminder to all of you parents out there um, that we also have to take a look at us. We have to make sure that we are doing our self-care and taking care of us as well. Um, Kevin, is there any last nuggets that you'd love to leave these parents with? Because you are such a wealth of knowledge and just, you're like a big old teddy bear and a comforter to a lot of parents right now. That's how I'm feeling as a Gigi. I'm like, man, he's just making me feel like we got this. We got this school year. We got it. Oh me, that's so funny. I did have a kiddo today call me Paw Paw. So I may have that Santa Paw Paw appearance. <laughs> I'm not a Paw Paw yet. I hope we will be before long. Uh, you know, one thing I would say too about to parents is if you do choose to to go this route with something holistic to approach it, you know, um, be consistent. Consistency is key. You know, one thing I think we in our society, we are so uh, consumed with a quick fix. Uh, we want, we want improvements. Now we want solutions. Now we want, um, you know, we want to lose 20 pounds in two days. We want to lose, you know, what, you know what I'm getting at, you know, we want yeah. a quick fix in society. It's, we are immediate gratification. Uh, so consistency is key, you know, your microbiome and your neurotransmitters and all that stuff did not get out of whack, I'm not sure another way to put it, overnight. And so you're not gonna fix all that overnight. Um, <clears throat> so I think consistency is key. Um, I did have one family tell me one thing. It said they had been using a kid's pack for two months and you know I was just doing follow-up saying, hey, how's it going? And I thought that mom said it very profoundly. She said, it wasn't until I looked back at where we were two months ago compared to where we are today until I realized, you know what? Yeah, this there's a difference. This is this is working. So um, be, be, be consistent and phased benefits. There's phased benefits of our products. And so you, you, you stay with them with time. You will continue to see benefits. You know, you may see improvement in certain things at first. And then a few weeks later, you realize, oh, wait, we're sleeping better. You know, things will, will roll with time. So just it takes time to heal a gut, be consistent, be patient. Uh, that would be something. And then also, like I said earlier, one thing I want to leave with people is be aware of your kids, you know, watch for signs of any kind of stress uh, problems or having anxiety problems, anything that might be a, a red flag to you. Absolutely, because there are way, way too many, the topic no one likes to hear, but it's what's happening, way too many adolescent suicides, way too many. And we do, you know, it's the worst case scenario, but we do have to be in tune to that and to pay attention um, to that. And I, I love that you suggested both of that and to give it time. It, it you know, it, it took your body a while and your child's body a while to get to where it's at. 
And uh, if your child's, you know, bucking you on it, I, I get that a lot, Dr. Kevin, from parents where my child won't take it, my child won't do it, or they don't like the taste or which most kids love the taste of our stuff, but you've always got, you know, a couple that will say that, you know, my, my encouragement to you is like, there are so many things that you can do. Talk to the person that you're working with. Like, don't give, don't give up on that and, and really be their example, do it with them. Like we should all be taking better care of ourselves and they are watching us. I, Dr. Kevin, I've actually had parents where, especially the teenagers uh, or middle school age kids, if they were bucking on them, I, I would tell the parents, I would coach them through and say, listen, why don't you just take care of you and let your child watch you for a while? And I'm telling you, there is power in that. And usually the parents are like, what? I don't want to do that. I'm like, well, then don't tell your kid to like you be their example. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, it's kind of, you know, the airplane that tell you to put your mask on first before you secure the mask to the person next to you. Uh, you know, you can't really help others until you help yeah. yourself and you take care of yourself first. So a along with giving them an example of how to take stuff, but, you know, if you're dealing with mental health struggles, gosh, get your help, take care of yourself. And then that, that's, that's, that's key. So mm. do that. Uh, you know, all I will, I will leave families with this is this is not a quick fix. This is not going to fix everything in your family's life, but there are nutritional tools or support. There's positive communities out there that um, are here to give you guidance. And Dr. Kevin, you did just that tonight. You gave families some guidance tonight of things that they can try um, over time, being patient, being present, being balanced, you know, that hopefully there will be many, many, many more testimonies and stories of the ones you shared tonight. And um, for all sorts of different issues, you can never go wrong by fueling the body correctly. The body needs nutrition every day. It needs fuel every day. Dr. Kevin, thank you for your precious time. We know you are, have a very full productive life. We appreciate your time on behalf of all the thousands of people that will be listening to this. We love you. We respect you and um, God bless you. Thank hey, you. Thanks, time. Sarah. You're My welcome. My pleasure. So much fun talking with you as usual. Always, always. All right. Take care. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much.